Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1980 Pontiac Firebird. Now, I was 16 years old when this car was new, and my eye would have caught the fact that this one does not have a vent here. It has a flat hood, so it's not a Trans Am, or a Formula for that matter. No shaker, none of that stuff. This is a base car, but you gotta remember, 1980, don't get the wrong idea and think that high-performance cars were dead. In fact, of the 107,340 Firebirds built in 1980, 60% were Trans Am or Formula muscle cars. And in fact, one-third of all Camaros built in 1980 were Z28 V8 muscle cars. With that said, a whole bunch or about a third of Firebirds were cars like this, the basic car. Now there was an Esprit, kind of sec secretary special, or the basic Firebird, which is what we have right here. Now on this one we'll see, this one has the 79 through 81 nose shia, face shia, if you will. And you gotta remember back in 1974, when Pontiac came out with the Grand Am, 73, 74, they had that beak that was made of the same kind of a soft rubbery compound. And this is meant to deform and restore itself back to its original form in a five mile an hour impact. Not the prettiest beak on the planet, but frankly, this was the nose if you had a 79 through 81 Firebird. Now something that wasn't factory installed, but which is typical of the day, are these mesh headlight covers right here that would be purchased from JC Whitney or any number of aftermarket sources. No real reason for them, but it gives the look of a rally car wherein you know charging through the uh, the Paris Dakar rally the stones wouldn't break your headlights at night and leave you blind this is not going to be an issue in a car like this but with that said kind of sporty and pretty typical to have people gussy up their firebirds like that especially a basic car like this now under the hood there's no shaker which would have been the case with a Trans Am with a carburetor or the turbocharged 80 and 81 Trans Ams which would have had an asymmetrical bubble this is a flat hood right here nothing to it or is there well Oh, we look underneath, and before we get to the engine, something kind of worthy of note is the fact that the bottom side of the hood has this sort of trapezoidal shape <coughs> right here. So this under frame is the same one that was used on turbo cars because they would have a room up here, a space, a bump for the turbo. So the same underframe was used on turbo and standard hoods. So I guess GM was commonizing that part to save a few bucks here or there. Now under the hood on this one, well, no V8, no shaker, none of that stuff. This is the 3.8 liter Buick sourced V6 engine. See how long that fan shroud is? The V6 is so short, it had to have a bit of an extension here to provide the hallway effect for the draft through the radiator. HEI ignition right here. Now we gotta remember the Buick 231 V6, its roots go back to 1961 as the 198, the 225 odd fire V6s. General Motors sold the tooling to Kaiser, which used it in Jeeps in the uh, late 60s. American Motors sold it back to GM in 1974. And, and of course, Buick brought it back in 75 as their economy engine and trickle all the way over to Firebirds by this point in time. Anemic as heck, a little two barrel carburetor. Uh, you could get a three speed manual behind this thing right here. We'll find out what tranny this has in a second. But something seen here in its final year, 1980, is the cast iron moraine master cylinder. 1981, final year for this would have a plastic a reservoir and an aluminum uh, master cylinder body. So again, as GM tried to lighten the car and cheapen it, again, 1981 would bring the plastic master cylinder. Another detail we see on this one here, first year is the smaller aluminum housed air conditioner compressor. Uh, this would have been a large frigid air unit in earlier years, but this puppy right here was in keeping with the downsizing and the light weighting and the fuel efficiency Ising, cafe Ising of the Firebird. But again, two thirds of all Firebirds were Trans Ams or formulas, which tells you the American public didn't fully buy into the whole gas is gone, you know, economy downsizing crap because people wanted fun cars and Pontiac gave it to them. Even basic cars like this. Now inside this one, this one got its doors blown off, ha ha ha, we can see the inside. This wasn't automatic, so it had the optional three-speed automatic, not the three-speed manual, which definitely was the base tranny behind that three, 231 V6. And inside this, some Cadillac Eldorado hubcaps. What are these doing here? 1967 Eldo. Beautiful wheel cover, isn't that? It's a beautiful looking thing. But anyway, this ain't the hubcap game, so we'll leave that alone. 
So something kind of weird is, you know, the back seat of any Gen 2 F body from 60 or from 70 through 81 is never a really comfortable place because the back seats have two of these. This is the cushion you sit on. It's a little tiny dinky thing made out of foam and the, dr the drive shaft tunnel goes between these things. So sitting in the back seat of one of these things, if you're a six footer like me, it's not much fun. But again, these cars were meant to be enjoyed by generally one or two people. Now at the back of this one, we don't see the optional Trans Am spoiler. By, the, by this point in time, Firebird Pontiac, they would sell you the spoiler if you wanted on a V6 car and anything if you wanted. It was standard on Trans Am, but if you wanted it here, you could have it. But something kind of weird on this one is this. This is a General Motors deck, uh, a, a trunk lid, if you will. This is the, uh, the luggage rack. There you go, it's a luggage rack. And the same thing could be had on Camaros as well. I looked online. This is not an aftermarket piece. Now, I couldn't see an RPO code for a factory installed uh, luggage rack on the trunk. But the thing is, these cars have such small trunk compartments that sometimes to go on a long trip, you need to put stuff outside the car. And these weren't common, but you'd see them once in a while. And I looked online and I saw a bunch of Camaros and Firebirds with the very same structure on them as stock vehicles back in the day. So this is almost certainly a dealer installed option for Firebird and Camaro. Again, it's Fisher or GM blessed, but here it is right here. That's been here since day one, almost certainly. It's nicely installed, it's symmetrical, and I dare say that's a factory available, or I should say a, probably a dealer accessory sold through a Pontiac dealer right there to crutch the fact that the trunk compartment on these things is microscopic. And nothing too here for 1979 and 81, kind of a little tiny detail often forgotten, is that the license plate went from up here in 70 through 78 to down here to accommodate the larger plastic bumpers. And again, the brake light went even wider and went all the way across, whereas in 1978 back, it would have been up right in the middle here. Of course, the fuel filler is right here as always, unleaded fuel only. These have catalytic converters after 1975. And again, there's a pellet converter and we don't want to pollute it. The plastic gas cap right here. There we go. With the little, the nozzle restrictor, that thing right there added, I think in 75, that doohickey right there prevents you from accidentally or otherwise using the leaded fuel nozzle, which was larger, and loading your car with a catalytic converter with leaded fuel and polluting the anti-pollution catalytic converter. Figure that one out. But again, this is a, um, a basic car. Doesn't even have the optional rear window defogger wires right here. And I don't see the drip rail moldings, which would live right here. They were standard on the Esprit, but I gotta say, in many cases, by deleting those, you get a smoother looking car. To be honest with you, they look kind of ugly with that chrome right there. It was an option on anything but the Esprit. But the only downside is that on a rainy day with the window down, you know, you got water dripping on your shoulder. Mm, have fun with that. But uh, anyway, inside this one here, again, we have the automatic. Something kind of interesting seeing, I think in 75 up, here's the wood grain dash. RTS, no, it's not the rapid transit system. This is not a Plymouth radial tuned suspension. Was GM's way of saying that we're using radial tires now on all of our vehicles, Firebirds, and these tires, radials, are specifically designed to work with the suspension settings, the shock absorbers, the bushings, the sway bars, et cetera, for radial tires, which also have lower rolling resistance, which was another plus in the fuel economy feather starting in 75, I think it was. So radial tires were standard on these things. The original gauge cluster here, we can see over here, very basic, no tachometer, nothing, just volts, temperature, and nothing up here, or well, the oil light. Unleaded fuel only, of course, don't want to do that. And look at the 80 mile an hour speedometer. How depressing is that? Because I think in 78 or so, 79, there was a mandate that we had to have 85 mile an hour or below speedometers because after 74, the national law was 55 miles per hour. So why do you need 120 mile an hour speedometer? You're not gonna do that, you're gonna break the law. Right, but anyway, 80 miles per hour, up till about 88, 89, most American cars still played that game, finally breaking that rule by 90. Most people, or car manufacturers, went back to 100, 120, 150 mile an hour speedometers. Uh, and here we have here, Road Test Magazine, October 79, with the new 1980 cars. And here's the thing, if you wanted a Firebird convertible from 70 through 80, one, you were not going to get it from the factory. A little later on it came back, but here, 
there is a difference in that because this is a company here, National Coach Engineering, which would do a conversion on a Firebird to turn it into a convertible. It says here, National Coach has been around since 1976 building custom convertibles on, on such popular cars as the Cadillac Coupe de Ville and Continental Pickup. Anyway, uh, National Coach starts out each conversion with a full stripping right down to the floorboards. The roof is neatly removed. Both rear quarter areas are reinforced with steel angle iron. National Coach makes, its full, makes it a full frame car with the addition of 218 pounds of steel. But again, here we have their top down and here are some of the fixtures and latches. Some of these things are probably Corvette sourced, it says here. But interesting to see that where there's a will, there's a way, you know, and not cheap, but there's the, uh, the formula convertible. Now the Firebird convertible and Camaro convertible would come back in the mid late 80s, but certainly by this point in time, 1980, good luck. No big blocks, nothing, nothing cool really happening, but still Firebird sold pretty strong, 120,000 or so of these things in 1980. And again, two thirds were muscle versions of the uh, Trans Am with the hole or the Formula, which is an equally exciting car, but not quite as uh, blatant in its performance aspiration. So here it is, man, the Buick V6 still living on. And this very same engine right here by 1987 would be under the hood of the Grand National, the Buick Regal Grand National, with a turbo running 14 seconds, even 13 seconds, the GNX. Same basic bones right there. This engine goes back a long way. In fact, in the late, seven, late 60s, there was a lot of Buick powered Jeep CJs that had, again, that same basic engine. So it's an interesting story. Most people don't understand that GM bought this engine and the assembly line back from Kaiser Willys, restored it back to Flint, Michigan, and set up shop again in 1974 for the 75 model year. And of course, the Buick engine in the Pontiac, yeah, right here at Burniston Auto Wrecking. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mann's YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and be sure to hit the bell so you know when the next video hits, which is tomorrow morning.